Hello, Potato, and welcome to Weekend Magic for August the 17th, 2024. As you can see, and undoubtedly here, we are not in the void space today, because today's items are just a little too big to comfortably put up on the table. Uh, so we're back out here at the edge of Void Acres again to look at a couple slightly larger items. But first, this week we did see DisneyStore.com release a ton of merchandise. Uh, we talked a lot about last week, the D23 merchandise all came out on Monday, and I was only a little surprised that things like the $800 doll set and $150 pins and $300 star speeder sold out, because, I mean, you know, Disney fans. Uh, I did spend a couple hundred bucks myself. We'll deal with that in a future video, but I did, I did get one of the things that I wanted. So I consider that to be a good thing. Aside from the D23 stuff, they also released a whole bunch of Pandora charms, which thankfully neither myself nor my wife were into, so we didn't really pay any attention to those. Over on the Lego side, we got the official reveal of the Nightmare Before Christmas Lego set. It's gonna be 200 bucks. It's got, looks like the city hall, the house, the, of course, iconic hill with the moon in the background. The City Hall has the fountain in front, which looks really good. Honestly, the whole thing looks pretty good. We have a new version of Jack and Sally, different from the minifigure collection from a few years back. This Jack has the taller, like, original Woody avatar legs, so he stands taller than Sally, which really he should. And looking at the pictures of it, the only things I'm particularly disappointed in, at least in picture, is Lock, Shock, and Barrel. They just, they look very much like knockoff figures. They don't look good. Now, I couldn't see if their masks are in there or not. I didn't see it in the pictures, but uh, the unmasked versions riding around in the bathtub don't look great. Even for minifigures, they don't look great. But we will see. I think that will be a, an addition I have to get this year for the Halloween Village. I don't really, I don't really see like, a lot of stuff coming out for Halloween that I have to have. There's like one or two small Harry Potter things, that little barn facade, like just kind of like little kids, Halloween set I might pick up put in the Haunted Hayride area but as far as big sets go I'm pretty sure Nightmare is going to be the only one I pick up this year and hey at 200 bucks I don't really need to be picking up any other ones so why have we come outside today well I mean that assumes you haven't looked at the thumbnail because I'm sure I put pictures of these in it uh, but it's because of gravestones yes Lowe's put out their or at least some of their Halloween stuff last week they've probably put out more since then but we have not been back and Two of the things they put out were the other two Haunted Mansion gravestones I was interested in picking up this year. Of course, we've already looked at Madame Leota. The one we looked at admittedly was busted. We did get a replacement. It's fine. But we got two new ones. The first one being the, the simpler of the two. And it's one that I wasn't even sure I didn't that I hadn't picked up last year. I didn't remember. I know I picked up a couple there last year, and it's not this one. Last year we picked up Fred and Dave. This year we get Master Gracie, laid to rest, no mourning please, at his request, farewell. Now, the thing that I like about the Lowe's tombstones compared to the ones from Spirit Halloween, because some of them, they do have some equivalents. I think Cousin Fred is has both, or at least last year, had both a Lowe's and a Spirit version that were essentially the same tombstone, but the big difference was the bottom, as where on the Spirit Store ones, helps tonight the camera, on the Spirit Store ones, they have down here mounts for spikes. You can stake it into the grass. The Lowe's ones have weight down here, so they don't fall over. They actually do stand up on their own. Now, of course, you know, a decent wind and it's going to fall over, but I, as someone who doesn't leave my display out, like, all season long, that's not a huge issue for me. Uh, I'm not worried about something that's like I'm snagging it and running away. I generally make it very hard to easily get into uh, that part of the display. You have to like get over faked barbed wire and around fences and stuff. It's not, it's not easy just to run up, grab it and run away before anyone has a chance to see you. And indeed having them not stake into the ground makes it much easier to set up and put away because I don't have to like worry about trying to get the stakes in and lined up properly so I can put the tombstone onto them. Uh, my experience with those stakes generally is that I, our ground here is frequently too dry at the end of October, because it doesn't usually start, like, 
we don't usually get fall until November here. So it's usually still very summery and the ground is still very dry. And trying to drive in plastic stakes into dry ground is a bit of a fool's errand. So I do prefer these. I think as far as spirit tombstones go, the only haunted mansion we picked up was Madame Leota last year because Lowe's had versions of the other ones, which I prefer. I think they're a little bit more expensive, but I also, they're just easier to work with. And uh, Madame Leota can now be retired since we do have the talking one from Lowe's. I only picked up the spirit version last year because I couldn't find the Lowe's version. And if Lowe's comes out with versions of like the Hocus Pocus tombstone or the Beetlejuice tombstone, I probably will replace those ones as well, but we'll see what the future holds on that. Looking at it, it's, I mean, it's obviously plastic. I'm sure you can even tell that on screen, but it is kind of nicely pre-dirty. That's not actual dirt. That is, I mean, maybe it is, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that's just part of the finish of the tombstone, which does give it a nice little bit of an aged look. So it's not just like bright new gray plastic out there in your, in your graveyard. And it looks fairly much like the version you see at the Disney park. So that's, that's pretty good. I like it. I'm happy with it. Uh, I may actually be reaching the point in the next couple years here where I have too many tombstones. Cause, uh, I think my oldest tombstone is probably going on 30 years old. I got it back in the nineties. It was the first tombstone I got. And I do think I'm still using it. I don't know if it broke or not. It might've broke. Well, I guess I'll find out at the end of October when I set up the Halloween display. All right, let's put Master Gracie aside here and make room for, I don't know, I mean, I, I don't know if it's like the main star of this week or not, but it's certainly the one that's in a box. And that is this one. I guess they have run out of tombstones to make for Haunted Mansion and have now gone into the Pet Cemetery, which I don't object to. I think that's pretty cool. So we picked up the Haunted Mansion Cat Tombstone. I think this was more, definitely was more expensive. I think this one was like a hundred. But it says it's three feet tall, which tells me there's going to be some assembly required here. I do like that it comes in a box. Uh, so we will be able to like put it back in there for storage, keep it safe. But yeah, it says collapses for easy storage. Now they really didn't have any displays set up yet when we went in. Nothing none of these stuff was, was out for looking at. Like they had the Headless Knight, they had the Haunted Mansion Pillar, but they only had them in box. You couldn't like get an up close look at them. And honestly, from pictures I've seen the pillar, while I think it's cool that it has, comes with its own spotlight, which is nice. Uh, it does look like it is just fabric stretched over like PVC piping. And I not really into that. Plus I don't know where exactly where I'd put it. And the Headless Knight actually looks better than I thought it was going to but I don't want to get into animatronics. Those things are, you know, six foot tall, even taking them down, they're still in very large boxes and you have to find places to store them the other 364 days of the year. So I do plan on not getting the night, just like I didn't get the groundskeeper last year. I mean, if I saw it, like a, if I saw it for like 50 bucks on clearance and I might pick it up, but that, that would be about it. So yeah, let's crack this open and see what I'm guessing. Since it collapses, I'm guessing there'll be some assembly required. Let's open it up and see. I, I've said I decided to wait and open this on camera with you. I, could, I have plenty of time to take it back and return it if there's something wrong with it, like we had with uh, Leota. But I don't think it's going to be the case. And okay, so that doesn't collapse down. Well, there's our base. So it is. It is plastic. It's not. It's not a. Uh, foam or anything, but we do seem to be rather short on cats here. This, oh, that's interesting. The bottom is like uh, one of those dog food containers. So I'm guessing, I mean, yeah, I could look at the instructions, but what fun is that? I'm guessing that when we open this up, our cat is going to be in here. If, there we go. So they got a good, nice, I was going to say that it's supposed to be like a marble pattern, but I think that's actually just muck. It feels like there's muck on there. That's a good, heavy, sturdy weighted base. And yeah, here is our cat. So I do like that. I like that it stores up into itself. That'll be good for storing. Let's put the base back on. And then we will put this together. All right. 
Sorry if I'm hitting the camera. All right, so yeah, here's stuff rattling around and there doesn't seem like it's an issue. So I think we just need to take Miss Kitty here and line her up with the very oddly shaped. There we go. That that took like what, 30 seconds? That's, that's not a bad assembly time, of course. Uh, we need to move the camera, hold on a second. All right, I think that's better. Uh, hopefully the glare isn't hitting the camera too hard. I really can't tell because it's hitting the uh, it's hitting the screen on the back really hard. It looks like it might be a little uh, little glary up here, but I can't tell for sure. But so let's be able to look at Miss Kitty here. Now, yeah, this is one of the tombs. Honestly, this uh, up close does not look super great. It looks a little cheapy. This may have to go towards the back of the graveyard just to. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's up to the same quality as Madame Leota or even even Master Gracie here. And, and I'm going to say it doesn't... I think the big issue I'm having here is that the uh, the dark stuff, the, the, the dirt, the aging on it, is a lot more like sparingly used on the box. And on here, they like really went overboard. Like they gave her eyeliner, it looks like. And... Uh, there's a lot of dirt on the plaque, like maybe more so than I would particularly like. I do like that it collapses into itself, or it doesn't collapse, but it stores inside of itself. So I can put it back in the box, indeed when we're done with this, and then again when we're done with Halloween, it'll make it easier to store. Tombstones are not the easiest thing to store in any sort of uh, way that doesn't waste space. So I do like that. And I do like that we've gone into the uh, Pet cemetery. I wonder if we'll get more of the Pet cemetery tombstones as years go forward or if they'll just keep reproducing those. I guess it'll depend on how well this one sells. There is writing on it. In memoriam, Miss Kitty, after losing eight lives, you still had no fear. You caught a snake in the ninth and that's why you're here. See, it's just a little, a little too grimy. It's a little hard to read. But overall, I don't feel like I should pick it up like that. See, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if this is going to be like a plaster thing or or like a resin thing or not. It didn't feel heavy enough to be. Uh, so that's why you know I'm not too surprised that it's plastic. I do feel it's not quite up to the standard of the other Jemmy tombstones, but it's still not bad, and it's, I, I'm still glad to have it in the collection. Because I think it's fairly like we don't usually see them do very much with the animal tombstones there, the pet cemetery. I think the only other pet cemetery thing I have is from like the early 2000s, maybe the 90s even, may have been like 99 or no, nah, it had to be after 2000. But it's a it's a set of the pet cemetery pins that I have. I've actually showed in a video like years ago, I think. I think it might have been in the the quarantine logs. It might not have been. It might have been. I know. I think it was fairly early after I had set up the void space to start recording in, because I had t shot video of it while I was moving stuff around in there, and had spliced it into another video. But other than those pins, I don't think I have anything that is of the. I guess we can't pick it up that way. Just briefly anything that is of the pet cemetery so i'm it's kind of cool to see i'll be interested if they do other pet cemetery items but overall it's not quite as nice as i was hoping it would be and that really just largely comes down to the engrimening of it all it's just they just went a little heavy on the grime they could have gone a little more sparse like i think uh, master gracer looks the grime on it looks enough that it could actually be real dirt this just looks like they kind of went they went ham with the dark paint, the uh, presumably sweatshop workers, wherever these are made, uh, just went a little heavy, especially around the eyes here, and just a little much on the plaque. But overall, I think from a distance, I mean, if I step back, well, I can't step back far enough here, but I think if I set it farther back in the graveyard on Halloween, it's gonna look just fine. Also, the grime seems to have gotten caught very much on the seams in the plastic here, which just kind of highlights that there's a seam there, which I'm not super enthused about. And you kind of see that all the way down Miss Kitty here is, 
you've got this this very obvious line where the grime just got caught however they sprayed on or whatever it just really got caught on the plastic seam i don't know if they maybe needed to grind this down a little bit more or just the way they put on the grime is not great but overall i am pleased with it i like the i still like the construction of it i like that it stores in itself uh it is a fairly good mold i mean it looks like I mean, I've never gotten that close to look at the actual tombstones in uh, the Pet cemetery, but I do feel like the, some of the detail work on the face is just not quite right. But that again could come down to this, the black paint being, uh, again, being a little exaggerated. So here's, here's how it looks on the box. It's very sparingly used around the mouth. It's like not really on the nose at all. Uh, and it's very sparingly around the eyes. And over here, looks like someone did that with a Sharpie and just like, just just got in there with a, with a black marker and just marked it up. And that's, that is unfortunate. I do wish it looked a little more like the box. I think, I think I would definitely have a higher opinion if it looked more like the box, but I still like it. Still glad to have it. It's going to go back in the box now until the end of October, but I'm glad to have it. And it will be in this year's Halloween graveyard. And with that, I think it's a good time to wrap this video up, get inside before it gets too warm out here. Although actually it's not been that bad this week. It's only been in the nineties. It's not been the hundred and teens it has been like up through the state fair. So still no desire to hang out outside any more than I have to. We will treat inside and get this video posted. But what do you think of these tombstones? What do you think, particularly of the paint job on Miss Kitty here? Do you think they went a little overboard compared to the picture? Let me know in the comments. Are you picking up either of these? Have you picked them up already? If you've picked them as Kitty, is she, is she a little, uh, little over, over makeup like mine is? Let me know in the comments below. But I do hope you found this at all interesting or entertaining. But I do hope you found this at all interesting or entertaining. If you did, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel. I do thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.